The Mark Dacey Show, brought to you on Broadband Box Office Network, coming to you directly from the East Coast at VK Media Studios. We stream live every second Monday of the month, and we're archived on iTunes. So, like us on Facebook. Now, enjoy the show. On the road again, I can't wait to get on the road again. Life I love is making music with my friends. Everybody, I can't wait to get on the road again. On the road again. Like, okay, 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 okay. Hey, what's the last thing that you want to hear when you're blowing Willie Nelson? I'm not Willie Nelson. <laughs> I, no. <clears throat> okay. On, off again. I really, I, you know, it's amazing. It's amazing to me to how attracted we are to certain things and how either eventually or suddenly, say by virtue of an off-color joke, <laughs> for instance, we might find ourselves not attracted to a certain thing. Do you, you know what I mean? Did, did I start the show? Did I welcome anybody to the show? Welcome. Welcome to the Mark Daisy Show. I'm Mark Daisy. If for no other reason, that's my name. And this is our show. Get one yourself if you want or not, whatever. And hey, special guests today. They're ubiquitous. And I don't even know what that means. No. And uh, you can Google them on the interweb and do it. You'll love them. The Coots are here, my special guests today. Thank you. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> anyway, back to this beauty thing. I mean, I was, I'm thinking, like, for instance, if Willie Nelson, he never made it in the music business, and he was just like a homeless guy, you know, on the street or something, I, I mean, but, but God forbid that he would be, you know, because he'd be on the road again without a hit record. But I'm just saying that but chances are he wouldn't, you know, wind up being chased by young girls wishing to vanquish him of some lonesome cowboy soul. In fact, you know, I mean, he might look the same, but like he wouldn't have that singing outlaw star thing. You know, you know what I'm saying? You know, you know where I'm coming from? You know, are you are you reading me? Are you are you with me? It's because I, I I can't read the script anymore. I haven't worn my glasses in so long. Anyway. So welcome to the show. You deserve it. So, like for instance, like I would certainly kill a mosquito. But maybe not a ladybug, you know, like Willie Nelson, if he wasn't famous, but I, you know, he'd be, I'd, you know, I'd, I, I might go out with him. I don't know. I'm just, now I might shoo away a butterfly, but uh, I'd certainly kill a moth, right? Wouldn't you? Would I, you would, I certainly would. Yeah. I mean, there's a subtle difference. I mean, we learn, we learn to discern. <laughs> Is that fair? I, I don't know. I don't know. So, how much nurture? Nurture reflex nature, learned behavior. Well, in today's lesson, kids, we're going to explore the differences of blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so pick up your number two pencils, open your blue books to the first page. Ready? Begin. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean to invoke thoughts of classroom or, or school. But you know, hey, it's it's autumn. It's autumn, and I feel that certain certain kind of cool breeze of education coursing through my veins once again. You know how you really, you really want to get started with something. You want to go like things done. You know because it's just like the fall. Like you didn't do your homework. I, I, I like I gotta do it. <laughs> you gotta stay up late and study for the exam. You know you're driving 100 miles an hour. Why? It's the fall. It's autumn. Autumn in New York is kind of cool and groovy. So where was I? <sighs> okay, so anyway, now, I'm just excited. I mean, I'm, I'm excited. It, it also might be the after effects of that pile of meth I did over the weekend of, of, of binge watching Breaking Bad. That also might be affecting me. But I, at any rate, that's a great show, isn't it? That's it, really, it's, it makes me nervous to watch that show. Those guys are like making me nervous. I think things are going to happen to them. <sighs> anyway, so... Like I said, would you kill a ladybug as quickly as, say, a centipede? No, no, you, you kill a centipede, but you might save the ladybug. Go away, fly, fly away, be free. <laughs> Not the centipede. Bam! <laughs> really? I, I would, anyway. 
So I, I, a pigeon lands on your shoulder, then I don't know. But an Oriole? Ah, an Oriole. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm saying. So I don't know. It's certainly not a vulture. I wouldn't want like a vulture on there. But, you know, I always thought that it might be nice to pet an ostrich. I mean, they're nice and smooth, and they got those big feathers, those ostrich feathers, until I found out that they could, like, chase you down, like, at 50 miles an hour and rip your freaking heart out. They could do that, too. Guess what? I got bit by a llama last week. Yeah, what camera am I on? I don't even know. Am I on, too? I am? Am I, am I on, too? Have I deserved to go to the camera, too? I'm on page two. I don't know. Page two. I sound like, who's that guy? Page two. Paul Harvey. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Glenn. I really appreciate that. Okay. Oh. Anyway, um, oh, yeah, so, like, I'm out in, like, uh, I think in Taylortown. Uh, there, Glenn Taylor, right? Taylortown. I'm out in Taylortown, which is around Booton. around Booton. and Booton out there, okay? And, um, and, and there's, you know, I'm with, I'm with my, my little boy, and we're driving, and all of a sudden we come up on a llama. It's a, it's a llama farm. It's a whole bunch of llamas. And they're just llama around in the llama field, you know? I'm thinking, wow, that'd be nice to pet a llama. You know, what could go wrong? <laughs> so, you know, the, the, so we go up to the fence, and the llama comes out. You know, I guess it <laughs> looked like Mick Jagger for a second. But anyway, so the llama, he comes over, and he bites me. I go, I'm like, a nice llama, bam. He's like, oh, my God, a llama. You know, with, I, they get like llama. They got lame, don't they, or something? Gold llama lay. I, I don't know, whatever. And he bit me. <sighs> Eek, I said. <laughs> so who knew? <clears throat> I mean, they're beautiful. They're fur, but I mean, you know. They could bite you. So I guess what I'm getting to is like Orwell's, uh, you know, he wrote 1984, but I, I would rather talk about Animal Farm tonight. Arr! Animal Farm, yes. Animal Farm, because like, well, when that book was published, I mean, he couldn't get like 1945, he couldn't get the damn thing published. Why? Why? Well, because everybody in the book, the characters, are represented as political figures, like Stalin and his secret police and the Bolshevik Revolution. Oh, yeah, stuff like that. And nobody wanted to hear about politics after the Second World War. It was 1945, so Animal Farm went, but then later became like one of the best-selling books of all time in the top 100. Did you know that? I'm pausing here. Just think. <laughs> I've been talking like crazy. It's that Breaking Bad series. It makes me nervous. I'm still a little disjointed about it. Anyway, so that's what Animal Farm was about. It was about Stalin. It was about repression and everything. It was a little allegory, a little allegory of life, as it were. But in the book, the animals revolted against Farmer Brown. Yeah, and, and, but their fate was worse because when the pigs took control of the milk and the apples, well, that's when they hired the puppies who was led by Napoleon, who was, who was a dog, not to be confused with the real Napoleon, but you can see the symbiosis of rheostatic inversion, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, um, so the puppies, the puppies, they would like form killing squads and they would kill any animal on the farm who wasn't thinking like them. Animal farms. Sometimes a change in masters only leads to one group killing another. Hmm. Sound familiar? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I have a song. <laughs> On the next page. <laughs> Someone told me it's so whoops. Someone told me there it is. <laughs> it's live. Thank God I got the coots coming on because you'd probably turn off by now. Okay. Someone told me it's all happening at the zoo. I do believe it. I do believe it's true. I don't need that. Uh -huh. and tumble journey from the east side to the park just a fine and fancy ramble to the zoo you can 
take a cross town bus when it's rainy or it's cold and the animals will love it if you do someone tell me it's all happening at the zoo I do believe it I do believe it's true oh, oh, oh. Well, the monkeys stand for honesty, giraffes are insincere, and the elephants are kindly, but they're dumb. Orangutans are skeptical of changes in their cages, and the zookeeper is very fond of rum. At the zoo, the zebras are reactionaries, antelopes are missionaries. Pigeons plotting secrecy and hamsters turn on frequency. What's that? It's a guest to come and see. Ho! At the zoo. At the zoo. At the zoo. That's right, little thing at the zoo, man. So anyway, that's it. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I like to accept this award. That's the Montezuma bird. The Montezuma bird. The Montezuma bird. Oh, speaking of birds, I wanted to show you about birds. You know, they're not all the same. You thought that they were? Some are cute. Some will bite you. <laughs> I think we have something to show you. Is that right, Pat? Oh, what a beautiful place, all alone today, just to take some pictures of the birdies. Take some pictures of the birdies. Oh, what, hey? Hello. How you doing? How are you? Yeah, fine. I'm just fine. Yeah, just have to take some pictures of the birdies. That's yeah, really good. Yeah, good. I love bird watching. <laughs> oh, look. What? A golden-throated gilderadner. Oh, I thought they were extinct, although I did see one in California five years ago. Ha, ha, ha. Aha, a black-crowned Tyson. Look at that. Yes, yes, it only preys on little birds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh, well. Look, a red-tailed Greta Sachi. Huh. I've only seen that bird twice. Nice wings, though, huh? Really nice wings. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I don't know. Ah, uh, let's see. Mm. Oh, a redneck, a redneck Daryl Hannah. Oh. Very rare. Very rare indeed. You know, that's almost extinct due to its chief predator, the brown Jackson. <laughs> sure. Well, ha, bad, bad. You're a little slow there. What is it? What the heck is it? Look! What? A yellow-bellied OJ! Oh, uh, yeah, well, it kills its mate, then it flies to Chicago <laughs> for free. You know? Yeah. Yep, yep. Oh, yeah. That's right. Oh, my. What? Where? What do you think? A Clinton Eastwooder. A Clinton Eastwooder? <whistles> Where is it? I don't see it. A great crested goldie horn. I haven't had a good picture of that one in years. Well, don't worry, neither is she. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. Well, oh, the common spotted Debbie Moore, right next to a great bald Willis. That's amazing. No, it's over there. Hey, it's over there. Hello? What? What? Hello? Wait, I hear My a beautiful. My God. What? A hooked big Streisand. A hooked big Streisand? Oh, what an ugly bird. But what a beautiful song. Yes, a speckled sissy's basic. Uh, speckled. speckled and freckled. Look, what? A Jay Leno. What? A Robin Williams. Oh, a, a Barry Moore cuckoo. A giant, a giant Conan. It's beautiful. I love it out here. There's so many celebrity birds. I love the great outdoors. Don't you? Uh, okay, you're still here, huh? <laughs> Well, you know, it was a long time ago. I had to think of something to say, and so we put it on the screen with the guy with me. And the uh, yeah. So I guess what it comes down to is turkey buzzard, huh? Unattractive, cardinal, attractive, you know. So, I mean, what it comes down to is why are there no ugly magazine models? It's the same. It's what I'm talking about. I am I. I it's, it's, or 
Why do we prefer perfume rather than dead fish? Woo! You know, that's what, that's, and why do they set up balloons at, at car dealerships? <laughs> you know, like, you know, uh, Helen, we need a new car. That's right. Uh, oh, look, a new Toyota place with balloons. Quick. Uh, like, what? what? They put a balloon. Why? Because, uh, you know, a car dealership with balloons is more attractive than one without. <laughs> I don't know. Or, do you wear a tie? Are those who don't wear a tie not as better or as good a- as you are? Do you? Occupy or do you justify? I'm just, you know. And why did Paulie Shore get all those freaking movie deals in the 80s? I mean, it really wasn't beautiful and I didn't like them. Okay. I, don't, I don't know what happened there. That's like, that's an anomaly. Uh, an anomaly is one thing. Was the, yeah. Anyway, a snake, a sna- I think personally a snake is beautiful. You know, it's a beautiful creature, a little dangerous. It comes with a lot of different possibilities, but so does Lindsay Lohan, Miley Cyrus, or Paris Hilton. And I wouldn't mind having any one of them for a pet either. So the thing is this, who informs your perception of beauty? Is it NPR or FOX? I ask you. So domestic or foreign? Black or white? Wet or dry? (laughs) I don't know. A turban or a hijab looks different, doesn't it? I mean, it just looks different. Still, the naked cowboy in the middle of Times Square with his underwear on and his and his cowboy hat and his boots. I mean, uh, that would look kind of out of place, too. The thing is, you can say about him was he was pretty brave for wearing it. So at least he wasn't being stoned to death for not wearing something on YouTube, uh, which is what we don't do in this country. Maybe a little waterboarding here and there or something, et cetera, et cetera. But in America, we can still think and talk about it. In other words, there's Howard Stern and Charlie Rose. There's Pat Robertson and Bill Maher. And you can decide to build a web or fly around it if you want. So while the rest of the world is trying to kill off the rest of the world for what they believe is their king or their god... We hold these truths to be self-evident. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Honey, gather up the dependents. I'm starved. The what? The two dependents, we claim. Be a good spouse and bring them to the table. Have you finished the taxes yet? Of course, my lovely 223 dash. Honey, my social security number starts with 233. You haven't mailed the taxes yet, have you? Please double check each name and social security number on your U.S. income tax form. Include the correct first name, middle initial, and last name of all dependents along with their correct social security numbers. Because just one wrong name or number could delay your tax refund. I was too busy acting like a big shot. I didn't double check. Oh, sweetheart. Last night when you were out bowling, I made the corrections. You did? Oh, honey, I'm nuts about you. Where's he going? Hey, we're back. We're bigger than ever. Why? Why? Volume, volume. Turn up the volume. Sell more, much more, less. I don't know. Anyway, we're back, and so are you. So thanks for tuning in to the Mark Dacey Show. As I say, we're here. Stop making faces at me, Tesh. <laughs> Uh, their latest album is called Tales from the Endless Bus Tour of New Jersey. And they also have Cootleg. And they'll be appearing at any millions and numbers of places around you. And you can uh, uh, check, you, as I said, Google the darn guys. You can Google them on, at cooch.com and find out where they're going to be, what they're going to be doing, and go see them. Look them up. They're cool. And right now, it is my pleasure to introduce the Coots. Thank you. Are you ready, Keith? I'm already. A one, two, three, four. There's a pole on a western bay, and it serves a hundred ships a day. Though the sailors 
pass the time away talking about their home. There's a girl in this harbor town and she works laying whiskey down. It's a brand new fetch another round. She serves him whiskey and wine. She hear him say, Brandon, you're a fine girl. What a good wife you would be. Such a fine girl. Your eyes can steal the sailor from the sea. Brandon wears a braided chain made of finest silver from the north of Spain. I like it. That bears the name of the man that branded love came on a summer's day, bringing gifts far away. Though he made it clear he could not stay, no harbor was his home. The sailor said, "Branded, you're a fine girl." To the side in town, she'd love a man who's not around. She still can hear him say, she hear him say, Brandon, you're a fine girl. We're gonna do a little switcheroo here. That's what the Coots is about. Five of the 24 of us. How many? That's 24. Your mileage may vary, Mark. That's unbelievable. All right. You all set there, Jefferson? There we go. All right. Song by Jerry Rafferty. One, two. Another crazy day You drink the night away And you'll forget about everything This city doesn't make you feel so cold It's got so many people But it's got no soul And it's taken you so long To find out you were wrong When you thought it held everything you Used to think that it was so easy You used to say that it 
was so easy, but you're trying, you're trying now. Another year and then you'll be happy. Just one more year and then you'll be happy, but you're. A lad in his place and he opens the door, he's got that look on his face, and he asks him how you've been. He tells you who he's seen, and then you talk about anything. He's got this dream about buying some lands, gonna give up the booze and the one night stands, and then he'll settle down in a quiet little town, and you'll forget about everything. You know he'll always keep moving You know he's never gonna stop moving Cause he's rolling He's the rolling stone When you wake up it's a new morning The sun is shining it's a new morning And you're going presents the best moments in rock. $995.99 in one Husky payment. The best moments in rock. We accept your visa, your passport, your green card. Don't delay. Call today. And now for a sampling of the best moments of rock.
Rydell presents the best moments in rock. Yes, you get only the important parts. Call right now. We'll accept your green card. We'll accept your passport. We'll accept your visa. We don't care where you come from. Just send us money. Lots of it now. Remember, it's Rydell Rock. I, I, I could do uh, uh, Leonard Nimoy. So I wanted to make sure I could do Leonard Nimoy. Oh boy. Perfectly logical, Captain. Yeah. See, I could do that. Thank you. And I could do the guy from, as I was saying, from Silence of the Lambs when uh, Jody Foster wants to use his phone because they, they've caught him. He's, my joint can use my phone. Okay, so that's it. And that's, that's basically my talents. And uh, thanks very much for coming. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Why? It's Glenn Taylor and, and and the Cooch. This is Glenn Taylor. Would you introduce the Cooch to everybody? What camera are we on? I don't know. What, I think this is the only one that's facing us. Okay, <laughs> two. Well, I'm Glenn Taylor. This is Joe Alexander Thank from you. Linden, New Jersey, from Little Falls. Russ Grappella from Jefferson. No, he's from Hopatcong. Jeff Gunther and from Jefferson, Mr. Keith Thiel. Wow. And there you go. These are the coots. These are like five of the of the coots that the, the, the coots are like. They multiply. There's like a million coots, and you can find them on the web, and they're great. And go out and see them live. Why did you call you guys the coots? Well, we started out being called <laughs> the Old Man Jam, and that was a little too literal. So we uh, decided to adapt the word coot, like you old coot. Ah, the coots. And make it a little wacky with the spelling, the K I like and the it. Z. And, I like it. You know, so I like it. And we've been that way for 14 years. I was just going to ask you, if you've been around for, for a while now, 14 years is a good long time. That's hard to keep a band together. But the way that you do it, you kind of, <laughs> well, I mean, you rotate the guy so that it's like you're... tires. This guy... Uh, <laughs> hey, I beg your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of tread to be said here. Uh, but you, you're always working, and I know that he works the phones. you got to talk to these guys all the time. You're always working the clubs, and, and, uh, and, and you're popular, and people come to see you, and it's just great to keep this going and the music that you play is like so broad and, and it's it's really uh, it's a wonder because this business gets so much more difficult every day and you're out there doing it and uh, I applaud you uh, so you've been doing this 14 years now as, as the coots we've been together 14 years in some shape or form uh -huh. and uh, you know we uh, currently the roster has 24 members of which you have five here tonight and uh, we're even sometimes we're in two places at once. Um, we can split the band in half. Somebody calls with a last minute show they need. We can make it happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just been great. The variety of music with all the different guys and their song catalogs is just fantastic. I know. I was talking to you, I think, uh, the first time that we met was maybe about 10 years. I was doing some recording with Glenn. He has Taylor Made Productions, which is uh, uh, it's in... Caldwell still is yes. it? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. A great, wonderful studio. Uh, if you have the time and the energy, uh, yeah, you want to talk to Glenn about recording your stuff. He's the man to see. He makes it. He makes it sound the way it's supposed to sound in your head. So. Um, and Russ fixes everything. And, <laughs> and these guys came down and just like acoustically. We're we're putting this this t together, and it just sounded so great. Um, and I know that you have a couple more tunes that we're going to do tonight. So. Um, now, is there anything that you want to let everybody know about who uh, probably doesn't know how to get in touch with you or, or wants to buy like a Coots t-shirt, they, they want to come out and see you, they want to support you, what can they do? How do they well, find they you? can go to uh, the website, which is www.thecoots, T-H-E-K-O-O-T-Z.com, and there's a schedule tab, there's a company store uh, tab if they want to get a disc or a t-shirt or a hat. Um, we give them free chewing gum with every offer, there. with every order. Right there. And uh, we also have a Facebook page, which is Glenn Coots Taylor. They can go there and uh, you know, get the more immediate. Uh, I think we even put you on there. In fact, if you go to Facebook, you you, you get a free beard on on your face, which is which is interesting, and it'll apply, as I'm saying. So uh, thanks, guys, for coming. This is just such a, a, a real treat. Thanks to have a whole band on the show. It's just a groovy groovy thing, baby. Yeah. Okay, well listen, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, the Coots are going to do another song. What do you think about that? Okay, so stand by. Uh, the air man. dances with the waters, which brings the rain that feeds the land, that is home to the animals. All life dances together. In a world so connected, choosing one environmental cause can be hard. Earthshare is 40 environmental charities working together. You and your company can help by calling 1-800-MY-SHARE. All life lives or doesn't together.
Hello. Uh, the coots are coming up. But I wanted to tell you uh, something I did last week <laughs> first, because not that it's more important. It's just that I'll forget about it if I don't say it now. Where was I? Oh, yes. Okay. So um, I just want to read you this, this letter that I, I sent to... Uh, <laughs> I don't get sued for this. Probably not. It's actually it's very positive because Gerber makes wonderful uh, food, uh, wonderful baby food. So check it out. It was just a little difficult to open. So I wrote them a letter. I said, Dear Mr. Gerbers, uh, sir or madam, <clears throat> could you possibly make it more difficult to open your Gerber second food containers? <laughs> Perhaps you could seal them in a titanium lockbox without a key. In the meantime, I'm so glad you've preserved the freshness. <laughs> However, my nine-year-old with his tiny, nimble fingers cannot open them with a team of engineers. I have used a plier. Really, I've used a pliers. <laughs> and my wife will divorce me if she breaks another freaking nail. As I am sure this is the absolute first letter that you have received regarding this matter, I can only hope that it might be the last. Your package reads... Do not use if foil seal is broken or missing. Really? <laughs> I don't know anybody who's been able to open it. <clears throat> Who can open it in the first place? Oh, by the way, they're delicious. Once you get them, you know, once you... Once you get them open, they're just, they're just great. <clears throat> Sarcastically yours, Mark. Come on, really? Daisy. So, okay. They sent me back this letter. <laughs> Your letter is very important to us. But as you may understand, we receive so many letters. Yeah, really? I guess so. <laughs> that we cannot read. Apparently, because <laughs> you can't open the things still. So all these people are writing in, please make it easier for my son to get his food. And like nobody's reading the letters. <clears throat> With the letter, they sent me three free coupons for more hard-to-open containers of Gerber Second Life Baby Food. <laughs> Which I really appreciate, because it's delicious. I love this stuff. Once I get it open, I'm just too old. I guess my fingers are... It's the rheumatoid arthritis. The, my teeth are falling out. I, ow. <laughs> Speaking of getting a little older, oh, you know, but that's just a euphemism for the coots. One more time, ladies and gentlemen, the coots.
You can use my guitar. Oh, all right, thank you. Oops, gotta cost you. I knew that was gonna work. Influence on you under. Okay. Oh, yeah. There you go, Nance. Whoa. We're gonna, we're, you know what? We're just gonna wing this. Uh, the coots have invited me to play. I'm a, I'm a coot by the way. If you can make it here. If I could make it anywhere. Um, do we have a bass? Yeah, 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 double bass. Yeah, double bass. Double bass. This is exciting. Do the oh, and this is why I don't know this song. Okay. Oh, here it is. Oh. <laughs> yeah, straight ahead. Hi there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, you with me? A one. Yep. A two. A one, two, three. <laughs>
Bum, 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 Thanks very much, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank uh, Bill, Bill William, Billy Willman. Yeah, there he is. House band. Yeah. Hey, hey Nancy. Nancy Cavalon, background vocals here. Oh, yeah. Pat Marucci, our illustrious leader. <laughs> Back in the directed ship there. VK Media Studios here on the East Coast. Broadbandboxoffice.com. Check it out. Adios, my friends. And all I gotta do is act naturally. <laughs> 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 Hi, my name is Tom Ragu of the Tom Ragu Sit-Down Comedy Show. You can listen to us at the Broadband Box Office. And for more information, please visit www.tomragu.com slash podcast. Hi, I'm Randy Lupo, host of the Randy Lupo Show on Broadband Box Office. Wait, is that a tongue twister or an alliteration? Come meet my favorite people, comedians, actors, writers, spiritual people, and everyone in between. I'm looking forward to seeing you. I'm Lou Cicinia. And I am Daisy. And check us out at the Greater Jersey Buzz. At broadbandboxoffice.com. Broadbandboxoffice.com. Remember that. The finest talent in the world are on these microphones every month. I kid you not. Yes, we will have a variety of different guests ranging from comedians, entertainers, singers, politicians, you name it. We're going to bring it to you with light conversation, a lot of information, but most of all, a lot of fun. Check us out at the Greater Jersey Buzz. And you'll see Daisy, too. And you'll see Lou. <laughs> Hi, everybody. How are you? I'm Bob Gonzo of the Bob Gonzo Show. And I'm here to introduce the Bob Gonzo Show to you. Watch the Bob Gonzo Show on ComedyMondays.com and iTunes. Once again, ComedyMondays.com and iTunes. Watch it live or you can watch it on the archives, which means you can watch it forever. Bob Gonzo is the greatest show on the internet right now. It's the funniest, it's the sweetest, it's endearing. We have stand-up comics, we have bands, we have actors, we have people in the fashion industry. We have everything you need. So once again, the Bob Gonzo Show, the greatest show in the world. And if you watch it, you will become a better and happier and sweeter person. You, 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 you. Watch the Bob Gonzo Show, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, this is Dr. Barry Prostowski. I invite you to watch Courageous Doctors, an exciting new show on broadband box office about how healthcare is affecting you today.